Hello, and thank you for joining us once again on the NCHC podcast. My name is Paul Gilmore, and joining me for this particular interview is a player that does not need a fancy introduction, but she's going to get one anyways. She was the Maravich Award winner. She won an Undisputed National Champion. Colleges are looking for her, and she's joining us on this podcast. Maddie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Uh, excited to have you on the podcast and talk all things hoops and what's going on with you and your family. And we've uh, you know, been using these podcasts as an outlet to really highlight homeschool athletes that we believe are really making a big difference you know, within homeschool athletics, but also off the court as well. So excited to have you on and just talk to you about hoops and, and what you have going on. So taking it back to March, you guys had just won... Uh, an undisputed title, you go on the longest and deepest run in program history, um, not only making the Final Four, but then ultimately going over the hump and winning the undisputed national title as well. Uh, I just have a question for you. What was the locker room like after that particular game? Like, yeah, were, there, were uh, there any conversations or any things that happened, like side conversations that were particularly memorable for you? Yeah, uh, funny you say locker room because... We actually did not use it at the end of the game, you know. We all just ran to the middle of the court. We celebrated. We were jumping up and down, you know. We got the big banner and the trophy. The only time we used the locker room was uh, right before the game for like 15 minutes, you know, to get ready, get all of our stuff together, and you know, get our hair done. And so we just, we actually did not use the locker room because, you know, the whole season, you know, we would go to these go play these public school games, private school games, and they would come and they would show us the locker room. They would say like, here, here's the locker room that y'all can use whenever. And we were like, okay, you know, thank you. And you know, halftime comes and we just sat on the bench. We made our own little huddle and uh, you know, cause we're a homeschool team. We don't have a home gym and we don't have a locker room because we're not, we're not used to having a locker room. So, you know, why change that at the end? So we, we kind of just all stayed out in the middle of the court. We kind of just celebrated all together and with our fan base, too. We cel celebrated with them, too. But it, it was very crazy at so, the end of the game. It was, it was very crazy at the end of the well, game. In, in terms of, like, so maybe not a locker room, per se, but there had to have been some kind of post-game celebration, right? Did you guys go get, like, ice cream, or, or what, was the, what was it like after you won? Yeah, so... Like, after we won, we watched the uh, guys game, and then right after the guys game, um, me, Kendall, and Emily, and Kayla, you know, Kayla was hurt, so she obviously couldn't play the uh, the game, you know, the uh, all-star game. So literally the right after, game. like, yeah. yeah, the all-region game. Right after our uh, championship game, we just played that game, and, you know, after that, we just went back to the hotel. We all just hung out as a team. We all just had fun. We sat out in the lobby and just kind of, we uh, actually like stayed up probably to like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. just playing uh, Uno and it was just, it was fun. So were, were any of your teammates the kind of athletes that, you know, during the season were on a strict diet and then after it's over, we can kind of like pick out or was it more just kind of like, we're just having fun? It was just kind of, we're having fun. Fair enough. I, I just remember some of my teammates after the season was over, every year they went to Krispy Kreme as soon as the last game was over and just broke whatever whatever diet they had. So I'm not sure if y'all were doing that as well. Uh, but speaking of, of winning and, you know, kind of the aftermath of that, um, what was your phone like in the next like 24 to 48 hours after you win? Yeah, um, my phone, it was, it was probably like the craziest it's ever been. Like, we had some Panther alumni watching from home on the live stream, and they were just supporting us there. And they were texting all of us. They were congratulating us and congratulating on our win and uh, and you know our fan base. You know they were all saying congratulations and even people on social media that I didn't really that I don't really have like um, like mutual friends with. Like they were even congratulating us and it was pro it's probably like my phone is probably the craziest it's ever been. So we're going to get into this a little bit later as well, but you are, are one of an athlete that is being, um, you know, followed by some college coaches and have, you know, some offers out there and some coaches are kind of seeing what's going on with you. Did you have any of those reach out to you after that game? 
Uh, yeah, I had a few. Um, they, you know, saw my Twitter post. I, tw I posted uh, our championship game on Twitter, and I was just congratulating us and our team. And, you know, they reached out, and they were like, hey, like, I just want to, like, you know, that's awesome that y'all won. Like, congratulations. And, yeah, they were just congratulating us. That's great. I had mentioned it during the intro, but you, just kind of recapping, you won the Maravich Award, which is homeschool's top uh, basically individual award that someone can win. Uh, the Undisputed National Championship. You guys won regionals. Uh, essentially, every accolade you can think of within the homeschool world, you kind of collected all of those in this past year. So going into this next year, I know you guys are a senior heavy team. And, you know, obviously the, the idea is to win another one. But what is it like preparing for that next year knowing that you kind of have all of those in the back pocket. Does it change anything for you in terms of your preparation? Yeah, so knowing that we have all of that in our back pocket, it's great to know that. Um, but, you know, last year we did what we did, and this year it's a new year, so this year is going to change because we, you know, lost some seniors last year, and our team is, a, like, smaller in number-wise, so this that'll change. But as long as we do what we can do on the court and just play how we play, then I think we'll be good. Well, and speaking of those uh, teammates that you were talking about, the team that you play on is loaded with like college level athletes. So, you know, you'd mentioned uh, Kayla McGarity, Kendall Beck, yourself, um, and, and you know, some other players that I may be forgetting. Uh, but going into next season, how much pressure do you think there is internally within your team or externally for you guys to repeat? Yeah, um, so externally, you know, I know like our fan base, they really want us to win again. They want us to bring home nationals again. So I can see how that uh, could be internal pressure, but we try and check all that pressure out of the door. And if we're struggling with it, you know, we are there to like help each other, lift each other up, and then when we get on the court, we just want to have fun. So we kind of just check all that internal or external pressure at the door. So this one I was kind of curious to ask throughout the season, but I obviously didn't have a chance to, so I'm going to go ahead and ask it now. So last season, San Marcos Panthers on the girls' side started the season ranked ninth. Uh, and the previous year had finished at 19th, like kind of in the country, the national rankings. Throughout the season, I had seen some things on Twitter, not necessarily from you, but just from San Marcos and people within the program, that there is almost a sense of uh, like nobody believes in us, in a sense. So was there a definite like chip on the shoulder within the program or was it more just we need to, you know, just kind of prove it and let it be what it'll be? Yeah, so I don't think there was a chip on our shoulder, um, but at the beginning of the season, we were the underdogs, and we wanted to prove that we are the best Panther girls, that girls team in the Panther in the Panther organization. Organization, and um, so a turning point in the season was really at uh, regionals when we were playing Dash. We were down 15 points late in the game. And three of our starters had fouled out, and, and our sixth man also fouled out. So our three bench players came in, and we only had five girls left. So we just worked, we all worked together. We, we stayed calm, and they started turning the ball over. We started scoring more. We uh, stopped them from scoring. And basket by basket, we came back and we won. And that just show, really shows that whoever's on the court, we can all work together. Our chemistry on and off the court is great. And that we just, we're, we can just really work together no matter who's on the court. That's a great response. And I, I do remember that. I was there for that particular game and was a little bit surprised, I guess, how things were going, but it was really, Great to see you all turn it around and, and like you mentioned, have uh, the bench players come in, which kind of shows the depth that your particular team had. And going into this season, I know we kind of talked about earlier in the podcast that um, there seems to be on the surface level as of now a little bit less depth going in in terms of numbers of people. Uh, you see, I mentioned it's kind of a smaller team. 
And the way that you guys play is kind of that aggressive attacking defense that leads to chaos and transition and things like that. That's the way that I, I noticed that you like to play. So going into this season, is there any thoughts about um, the depth potentially uh, being something that you have to monitor in terms of you know fatigue and particularly when you get to the tournament games and you have games back to back to back after certain days? Is there any element to thinking about you know tired legs or things like that? Yeah, so since we're going to have a smaller team, it will be um, a lot harder on us just because there's not as many, girl, as many girls and we can't get that many breaks. But um, we did talk about uh, like switching up the offense, going from fast to like kind of slowing it down to give ourselves a break. And uh, me, Kendall, and Kayla, actually, we were all three on the same summer team. So we have been in shape this summer. So that's a really big part for, for this coming season. So... And also on defense, you know, we're going to fall back a little bit, slow it down, give ourselves a rest, and just slow it down. Just give, give us as much rest as we need. Well, and this isn't, I believe, well known either, but I did have a chance to speak with your parents earlier, and your mom mentioned that she actually is taking over as head coach for varsity this year, uh, that Coach Banks was going down to a younger age group to coach his son, and, you know, she's been an assistant for a long time, but now she's taken the reins uh, going into your senior year. So I have to ask, what, what's it like to be coached by your mom? And do you have to kind of separate, OK, this is mom and this is coach or, or can they kind of coexist? So they can kind of coexist, but most times I separate them. And, you know, I think it's just going to be really fun. And I'm also, I'm also already used to her being an assistant coach because she's just been there all, all of the years that I've played on Panthers. So I will already be used to it. And so it'll basically be the same as it was last year, but this time she'll obviously be the head coach. And I think it's just going to be a lot more fun. I think it will be fun as well. Your dad mentioned he would like to sit on the bench as well. So just make it a family affair. And, you know, going into your senior year, what, what more fun can you have to have your whole, you know, not your whole family, but your parents be involved uh, that, that closely with your, with your team. I think that's going to be a great, a great thing. So kind of switching gears a little bit. Um, I know that you've been very involved in the college recruiting process. Uh, you know, coaches have been reaching out to you. I know you've made some visits and kind of have some decisions to make end of season. Um, but what what has the college recruiting process been like for you? How would you explain that to, I guess, other homeschool athletes? Yeah, so the college re recruiting process, it's been it's been very exciting. It's been all over the place. It's been stressful, too. But it's it's been such a great experience. Like it's been very fun getting to know all these college coaches and getting to know more about their program and their personal life and them getting to know more about my personal life and my basketball journey. It's just been really fun and going on visits and getting to know more about their environment and their just seeing their college campus. It's just been it's been very very fun and uh, just going to camps. It's fun playing with the girls and playing pickup and just being around their campus all day and um, it is a little bit stressful I would say because you know I'm I can be busy and it's hard like fitting college calls and visits and camps all in my schedule and so it can be a little bit stressful with that and just emailing coaches just texting them calling them but um, if anything I think it's more stressful on my parents than myself Well, and in particular, I think when you are talking about that college recruiting process, I could imagine for some athletes, it probably feels like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not 6'6", six, six. I'm not 6'7", you know, I'm, I'm more of a smaller guard and I like to play guard and I know you play guard as well, um, you know, either shooting guard or point guard, depending on what San Marcos needs. So for those people that aren't necessarily blessed with just like large you know, bodies or height or strength or things like that, um, that, you know, typically play guard or, or even some post players that, that are kind of looking for some colleges to finally reach out to them. Um, what advice would you give in that regard of, you know, people that maybe feel like, ah, you know, I haven't even heard from a D1. I'm only getting seen by D3 coaches or um, NAIA. So what, what kind of advice would you give for people that feel like they're in that struggle? Yeah, so for me, I actually, coming into my junior year, I only had one offer. 
and I started to get a little stressed out. I started to get nervous. And then I was like, you know what? I can't get stressed out about this. I started praying about it and I just kept working hard and I just waited my turn and now I have multiple offers. So, and another thing is I don't, players shouldn't compare themselves to other players, especially with their social, social media because some girls have a larger social media platform than others. And if you just compare yourself to that, it'll it'll bring in negative thoughts and it'll just really weigh on you. And just, you know, if you're just struggling with that, you know, it's just, you can't really let that get to your head. And with like girls, girls you see who are like 6'5 or 6 foot or 6'3, you know, they're getting a lot of offers, you know, and you know, girls who are, you know, on the shorter side, like 5'7 or 5'5, you know, like me, I'm 5'7, 5'7 and a half, you know, I, I, if I could be 5'10, I would, I would like to be 5'10, but, you know, I gotta work with what I got, you know, I just gotta keep working hard and play my game. I like the way that you said that because what it makes me think about is essentially what your identity is, right? Your identity is not solely just a basketball player. Your identity is not solely just someone on a team, right? You have that inward innate identity that you and gifts that you've been given and I like that you you know talked about the social media part of it it's such a huge part of our of our current culture and climate and um, you can get caught up in that and just have that be something that ends up becoming a negative thing so uh, for you I'm, I'm glad that it's about your work ethic and you know you mentioned reaching back out to coaches I think that's kind of an underestimated part of it as well that coaches expect you to also reach back out to them it's not just a one-way street so I think that's good advice as well. Um, so heading into your senior season, right? Thinking back all the way from the beginning of starting homeschooling, um, I had heard that entering high school, that your parents gave you a choice if you wanted to continue homeschooling or if you wanted to explore other options like private school, public school. I know there's some, some good schools over in the, the Hill Country area. Uh, shout out to the unicorns and, you know, the cougars and the high schools that are over there. Um, but what would you say, thinking back through that whole journey, what was the homeschool journey like for you either on or off the court? Yeah, the homeschool journey for me off the court was really great. You know, I have a flexible schedule and even while I'm doing school, I can actually work. So, uh, that's, that's a plus. And, um, you know, I get, I can wake up, do my school play basketball, hang out with my friends, or just just kind of really, it's kind of, I kind of have my own schedule, you know, and it's just very flexible and very relaxing. And then on the court, um, you know, I've been playing Panthers since I was nine years old, probably a little bit earlier than I should have been playing. Um, but uh, so I've just made amazing relationships and bonds. It's just with coaches, players, even uh, girls from opponent teams, you know. Sometimes we just get together with those girls and talk to them and talk to them about their season and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's really fun just getting to know girls. And I have really made uh, lifelong friends. And even though some girls have already graduated, I'm still friends with them. That's how like, great our bond is together. And so I really just love the homeschool journey. So last question, and I apologize that I didn't prep you for this one, but I'm thinking through that, you know, you're getting ready to go to college as well after this season. And, you know, I would imagine you're focused on this upcoming season and we'll deal with the college stuff later. But I just have to ask, when you think about going to college, having been someone that's been homeschooled for a long time, is there any like nervousness or is it excitement or, or what are the emotions behind thinking through you know, I've kind of been with this tight knit community of my family and people in the Panthers organization, and I could potentially go to a university that has thousands and thousands of students and classes that could have three, four hundred people in them. You know, what, what's kind of the thought process behind making that transition? Yeah, so I'm more so excited because what I'm looking for in a college is where I will fit and where I will be wanted. And so I think if I go to a college where I'm wanted, it won't be hard for me to make those types of relationships and it won't be stressful because I think it'll just happen if I go to the right place. And you know, I'm just really excited about it. Well, Maddie Herta, you have the extra benefit and privilege of living in one of the most beautiful places in the country, which is Central Texas in the Hill Country. I hope you enjoy the upcoming season. I wish you the best of luck 
and congratulations on everything that's coming your way between high school basketball and college offers and I hope God just continues to bless you in whatever your journey is. Thank you so much. Um, also, uh, You're welcome. so uh, sure, go I want to, yeah, I wanted to say that um, I wanted to touch on a little bit of the recruiting process before we, before we sure, uh, go ahead. stop this. Yeah. So what I uh, wanted to say was like for me, you know how I only had one offer coming in junior year. So I think uh, sometimes girls get caught up in all the different levels in um, college. So uh, for me, for a while, I was like, I need to go D1. Like, I need to go D1. And if I didn't, I I was like, if I don't go D1, then I don't know. Um, so I just going, like, if you want to go D1, that's great. If you go D1, that's amazing. But if you go to a D1 school or D2, any school that you, are, that you don't feel like you're being pushed to your best and you, you know you just like you're not very much wanted there you know you could that couldn't you could get like a bad experience or something you know um, maybe you just fall out of love or get burnt out you know I, what I just want to say is that go somewhere where like you're wanted and where you where you will fit and where you'll just like love everything about it and um, just and I do also want to say that I think y'all are doing an amazing job at promoting athletes because some athletes are overlooked some homeschool athletes that's what I meant homeschool and you know homeschoolers can hoop too you know and sometimes we're just overlooked and um, very clearly I do... overlooked especially because your you know your mom had mentioned trying to schedule some of the of the schools around your area and how they've shifted from you know, hey, let's schedule the homeschool kids to now, eh, I don't know, our schedule's kind of full. So like exactly. you mentioned, not overlooking homeschool athletes because they can ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, they can. And, uh, you know, it only really, really and truly only takes one coach to believe in you. That's excellent advice. I appreciate your, your wisdom and your honesty about the process and everything related to, to colleges. Um, I, I know that it will benefit people that are going to listen to this podcast. And so, again, like, like Maddie said, if you're one of those people that are out there and you are still in that process of, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, and you're wanting to play at the next level as a homeschool athlete, there is a lot of opportunities out there. And uh, I think, you know, Maddie is a great resource for that. There's a lot of other great resources out there as well. Um, so, again, don't, don't give up. And, you know, keep working hard. Uh, work ethic is ultimately going to pay off quite a bit. So, Maddie, anything else you wanted to add? Um, you know, I... Oh, yeah, also, I wanted to... Uh, another memorable moment was that uh, when we won uh, the championship game, I, uh, I, saw, I saw Mr. Uh, Stargell walking out with the microphone and, and, like, a box container. I was like, what, what is he doing? I was really confused. And, I had no clue I was in the lineup of even like winning the Maravich Award. And you know, all of a sudden he announces my name and I found out that I won the Maravich Award and you know, I'm just speechless and I just, I, I just didn't even know. I was so surprised, I was so shocked. And um, you know, really and truly, I think my team, you know, my team helped me get there, they set me up and I'm so I was so I'm so humbled and honored to receive that award and I was just so grateful. Well, and that, that response shows a lot of why you did receive an award like that. Um, not only were you, you know, w one of the best players on the best team in the country, but also a great representative for homeschool athletics. And coming back into your senior year, there's not a lot of players that won the Maravich Award as a junior. And so I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but coming into your senior year, that makes you a Sullivan Award winner uh, coming into this season. So um, one of the best athletes in, well, for sure, homeschool athletics, but I would dare to go a lot further than that. Um, and excited to see, again, how God continues your journey and looking forward to the season up ahead. So Maddie, thank you so, so much for joining us, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you soon. Yes, sir. I really appreciate all this. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next podcast. All right.